So about a week ago, I found a USB stick on the way to a PC repair business where I work part-time. It really looked standard. It was just a small metal box. And I only saw it because the sun reflected off of the case. For a second, I thought that the pavement had just erupted into light. Anyway, I decided to take it to the police station after work, but of course, because I work with computers, the temptation to look at the contents was, well, it was too much. There were a few folders with incomprehensible names, and three others. Case notes, training, and emails. There were about a hundred emails, mostly unconnected, but a few were really interesting. Now, usually I wouldn't go snooping through such private information, but I felt a strange urge. And in the end, well, I kept it. I think I'm going to hand it to the police still, maybe sometime in the future. I'm going to share with you the more interesting emails, ordered and formatted where appropriate, for easier reading. And maybe you can help me decide what to make of it. From Matthew Howard, Subject Rebecca Hey Dan, hey, how's it going? I know we haven't spoken lately. I've been busy with uni and there's been some drama going on in my family. Basically, I've had no time. I'm sorry about that. I'm emailing because I need some advice. What's with the fucking Hotmail account, by the way? It's about Becky, of course. You helped me out so much going through all that shit with her. I still think about her practically every day, but I've taken your advice. It's been difficult avoiding contact, but I've managed. Okay, I still have her number, even though she deleted mine, but I blocked her on Facebook and all that other stuff. Well, until she fucking emailed me yesterday. She needs help. It's about John, the new guy. I want to punch his head in. She seems really upset. Should I reply? Thanks. Signed, Matt. From Dan the Man. Subject, no. Matt... (laughs) No, (laughs) it doesn't matter why. You don't talk to her for at least a year after, okay? Good luck, signed Dan. From Becky1234567289. November 4th, 2012. Subject. Hey Matt, we need to talk. Matt, I hope life is treating you well. It's been a while, huh? Any girls in your life? The past week, I've been thinking about you a lot. I remember the moment when you said that you never wanted to speak to me again so clearly. I didn't mean to hurt you like that. I know my old address is blocked. I made this one to contact you. And if it's okay, can we talk? John has been acting weird and I need some help. I'm asking you because, well Matt, to tell you the truth, I'm getting scared of John and you're the last guy I've been close to other than him for a while. And I don't want to tell my friends because they might judge him. Am I becoming a stereotype? Okay, if you don't immediately want to delete this email, please keep reading and I'll explain. But if you want, continue to ignore me and well, I'll understand. And I really will never try and contact you again. So last month, John tidied up the bathroom. It sounds stupid, I know, but he really went at it. I went in there and it was spotless, the surfaces gleamed, he put some sort of freshener down and everything was exactly in its right place. You know how much stuff I have? We can't fit both our toothbrushes in the cupboards, so we lay them down by the sink. They were parallel to each other, completely straight, completely aligned. I was a bit freaked out, but I was also proud, you know? He just acted nonchalant, like nothing. Soon, the rest of the house is super tidy. All the books are ordered alphabetically, everything put away. The magazines on the coffee table stacked up in a square. I'm a bit weirded out and I ask him what's up. He says that it doesn't matter. Why should he be doing so much for me? Now, My first thought was that he was cheating on me. I have his Facebook password so I checked and nothing. His phone? Nothing. At the time, I was still suspicious, but not anymore. 
A week and a bit ago, I went into the kitchen, and he's rooting through the cutlery drawer. He's picking up pieces of cutlery, examining them, and laying some on the counter and putting them back in a drawer. The ones on the counter are perfectly aligned. I asked him what the hell he was doing, and he responded with, We don't need all this cutlery, Becky. I'm going to throw these out. I said, John, I know that's bullshit. And he got really angry, really defensive, and so I left. Last night, I woke up about one, and John wasn't in bed. I heard him rummaging around downstairs, and I snuck to the top of the stairs. You remember the coat hanger in the hall? We put a small bookcase next to it, and he was rifling through the books, taking some out. He was speaking to himself, whispering numbers and equations. And so I said, John? And he looked up. And then I said, what are you doing? And he said, honey. There are 75 books on this bookcase. That's 3 times 25, which is 5 times 5. It likes fives. I was shocked and said, what likes fives? And he said, the long face. And then he started sorting books again, ignoring me. I guess his behavior over the past month got to me and I snapped. I ran downstairs, shouted at him, and tried to put some of the books back on the bookcase. He grabbed at me, Matt. He fucking grabbed at me. I couldn't move, he was so strong. He pulled his free hand back, and I thought he was going to hit me. He said very carefully and very slowly, The bookcase needs 49 books. 7 times 7. It doesn't like sevens. It likes five. Okay? I'm going to have to train you up. I was so scared that I ran out of the house. Wow, uh, this was longer than I thought. I'm staying at Alex's right now. Can you come over? Even if you can't help sort this out, talking would be great. I hope to see you soon. Signed, Becky. From Matthew Howard. Subject, I don't care. I'm not going to do it. Dan, I've thought it through, and I'm going to talk to her. I don't care what you think. Signed, Matt. From Matthew Howard. Subject, holy shit, it's worse than I thought. Dan, hey, I'm sorry about being a dick in the last email, but I think I still love her. But listen, shit has really hit the fan, and at this point, I just need someone to tell. I went around to Alex's, Becky is staying there, and as soon as I knock on the door, she flies out and gives me the strongest hug I've ever felt. Her face was so red, I think she'd been crying non-stop since she left her house. Shit, I forgot you didn't know. John was being weird and she felt she had to leave. So I comforted her, and I got her some hot chocolate. Alex had fucked off somewhere she probably didn't want to deal with Becky. Once she had calmed down enough, I asked if I could escort her back to her house and maybe confront John. I was looking forward to that, let me tell you. When we got to her house, she told me I should go in first. On the doorstep were seven neat piles of books. I slowly pushed the door open and called out to John. There was no answer. Becky had told me before that the house was tidy, but walking in there freaked me out a little. It was like the house had no inhabitants and never had inhabitants. We searched around and I kept calling for John, but he didn't respond. Every room was so tidy and put together. We were both on the edge of saying, let's just go. And then I checked the bathroom. There was a trail of blood leading from the sink to the bath, and in the bath was John. He was so pale, his arms slit from palm to elbow. I almost threw up and tried to stop Becky from coming in, but she did, and then she threw up. We called the police, obviously, but while we were waiting, I noticed something. 
John was holding a small book. It looked like a diary. You know those moleskin things? One of those. And I took it. I, mean, I don't know why. Becky didn't notice. She was pretty shaken up. She still is, of course. I mean, what should I do with this thing? I mean, I can't give in now. Actually, when are you in town? I'd love to speak to you in person. Signed, Matt. From Dan the Man. Subject, meeting up. Hey, Matt. Wow, that's fucked up. Hey, I hope you're okay, man. Listen, I'm still away for like a month. Two at the most. Don't do anything stupid, okay? I hate not talking in person. I'm so bad at it. You'll be alright. Signed, Dan. From Matt. Subject, the diary. Hey, Dan. I read the diary. I guess it was written by John, and it explains his behavior. It's not really a diary, more of an encyclopedia, I guess. Apparently, John believed in this entity called the Long Face. It doesn't really explain what it is, but lists loads of rules for dealing with this thing. It likes multiples of fives and will seek them out. It hates sevens. Stuff like that. Pile things in this arrangement, etc. What a freak. Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject. I guess freakishness is contagious. Dan. The weirdest thing happened to me today. I was getting rid of some old DVDs. <laughs> Holy shit, remember Four Lions? Such a good movie. And I noticed there were five DVDs on one of the shelves in front of me. That made me think of the long face. I laughed to myself, but as I went to put the DVD I was holding into the bag, I saw a face. On the bag, I mean. The two clips looked like eyes, and the opening looked like the mouth. I mean, laugh if you must. I got two DVDs out of the bag and put them on the shelf. The face was gone after that. I probably knocked the bag into a different position. Becky is doing fine now. She wants to move out of her old house, but the contract lasts until September. So she's going to try and find some replacement tenants. I know it's very soon, but I think I'm going to ask her out again. We should get back together. What do you think? Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject. I think I'm losing my mind. Dan. Becky said yes. I took her to that Italian place you love, and we pretended it was our first ever date. It was great. But listen, this long face stuff is freaking me out. I keep seeing it everywhere. I'll be walking along and a car will pass, and the front of it will look like a face. I kept seeing faces and the froth of my coffee, and the shapes that buildings make. I'm going to make a confession to you, Dan. I started counting things. The books and DVDs first. Then, cutlery. I think it's because I heard that John counted this stuff too. Everything has to be in multiples of seven. If they aren't, or even worse, if I see multiples of five, I see more faces. And each face I see looks angrier and angrier. As I'm typing this, I could see the speakers as eyes, the keyboard as a mouth. I know this is all bullshit and it's all in my head, but I can't help it. I'm having problems sleeping. Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject, it's getting worse. Hey, Dan. You know that drawer that everyone has filled with all the shit in your house that doesn't have anywhere else to be? Well, it's been driving me crazy. I can't know if it's safe if I don't tidy it up. Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject, Becky. Frowny face. Hey, Dan. Becky caught me putting all the screwdrivers from the drawer in size order. She left, Dan. She left. Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject. Why aren't you replying? Hey, Dan. I was walking to work today. I saw a car face and I was so scared. 
It was coming towards me and it looked like it wanted blood. I thought it was going to swerve and hit me and that would be that. I figured out how to stop it though. It was red, so I started counting all the red cars. When I'm counting, it seems to get confused. As I was walking into work, I was at 20. I pretend I had counted one more. But it knew. Tomorrow, I'm going to do blue. Signed, Matt. From Matt. Subject. I just want this to stop. From Matt. I just want this to stop. From Matt. Why did I read the book? People need to be trained to... Long face. They need to know, but... Why me? From Matt. I counted the pages in the diary. 125. 5 times 5 times 5. Maybe the long face wants us to read it. What if I miscounted? 126 is a multiplier of 7. I'll do it again. From Matt, subject, we had a good one. Dan, I'm going to burn the books. If no one can read about this, maybe whatever evil it is will just dissipate. Hopefully my emails haven't been enough to trigger it for you. Don't come over, Dan. We are no longer friends. Signed, Matt. From Dan the Man. Subject, I'm coming over. Hey, Matt? I'm back in a week. I'm coming over. Why the fuck haven't you answered your phone? Signed, Dan. And that's it. There are no more emails by Dan, Matt, or Becky. And I've thought about it for a while, and I reckon something happened to Matt. I don't know whether he succeeded in burning that journal, or what might have happened to it if he didn't. But something must have gotten him. And I keep thinking about that last email. Why wouldn't he answer the phone? Edit. I tried to contact these people. It was a bad idea. Removed for your safety.